This is what Pope Paul VI stated in his encyclical Humana Vitae, published on July the 25th, 1968, in section 17. And I quote, With the advent of artificial contraception, people should first consider how easy it will be for many to justify behaviour leading to marital infidelity or to a gradually weakening in the discipline of morals. Not much experience is needed to understand human weakness and to comprehend that human beings, especially the young, are so susceptible to temptation that they need to be encouraged to keep the moral law. It is wrong to make it easy for them to violate this law. Indeed, it is to be feared that husbands who become accustomed to contraceptive practices will lose respect for their wives. They may come to disregard their wives' psychological and physical equilibrium and use their wives as instruments for serving their own desires. Consequently, they will no longer view their wives as companions who should be treated with attentiveness and love. End of quote from Humana Vitae by Paul VI. Now, what is the key to this state of affairs that St. Paul VI prophesied in 1968 and which we are seeing today? It's contraception, of course. Pope Paul VI saw this happening within marriage, but we can see that in the present time more people are having sexual relationship outside of marriage and that the institution of marriage itself is more under threat than ever before. Now, what is contraception? The oral contraceptive pill came on the market in the 60s and was widely embraced as the answer to growing population, particularly in the third world countries. And indeed aid to these countries is still given in conjunction with an aggressive policy on population control. IPPF, which is International Planned Parenthood Federation, is given, giving huge grants of taxpayers' money to promote condom use, abortion and sterilisation in countries who receive aid. The pill was also seen as a way to enable women to be less tied to the home and have the freedom to have fewer children and return to work. So, what does the pill do? Basically, it mimics through artificial hormones the woman's menstrual cycle. It makes the woman's body think it is already pregnant, hence the side effects of increased irritability and depression and even weight gain. I've never seen the leaflet in the packet, but I understand it has all the side effects listed, including danger of blood clots, high blood pressure, the pill is designed to suppress ovulation and is a highly effective form of contraception, 99% method effective. If there is ovulation and the woman takes the contraceptive pill, her hormones are affected in such a way as to make the womb hostile so that there can't be implantation. But what is all it also does is to switch off the brain so that when a couple want a baby later on, the brain doesn't always switch back on again and they are left with reduced fertility. I wonder is that one of the reasons why people are far less fertile today. That's becoming a growing problem and the wide use of the contraceptive is part of the problem. All cigarette packets these days carry a health warning. The same should apply to contraceptive packets. Putting it bluntly, the contraceptive pill is hostile to a woman's reproductive system. Dr. Janet Smith, this is what she writes, and I quote, It was not until the 1930s that the Anglican Church went on record as saying that contraception was permissible for grave reasons within marriage. But the Catholic Church has been clear and consistent in its position on contraception throughout its whole history. 
We all know that in the early 60s there were perceptions of population problem and growing sentiments that it would be inhumane for the church to continue with a policy that promoted large families. Radical feminists argued that not having children would enhance access to careers. When Humana Vitae was released in July 1968, it went off like a bomb. Soon, theologians and eventually lay people were dissenting not only about contraception, but also about homosexuality, masturbation, adultery, divorce and many other issues. The Church, the Catholic Church, continually reiterates its opposition to contraception as a great moral wrong. Now, I think the experience of the last many decades has revealed that the Church has been very wise in opposing contraception. Why? Because contraception facilitates the sexual revolution which leads to much unwanted pregnancy and abortion. It has made women much more open to sexual exploitation by men. The millions of abortions over the last decade and the phenomenal spread of AIDS alone indicate that we have serious problems with sexuality. Back in the 1930s, Pope Pius XI stated in his encyclical Casti Canubi, this is what he says, no reason, howsoever grave, may be put forward by which anything intrinsically against nature may become conformable to nature and morally good. Since, therefore, the conjugal act is destined primarily by nature for the begetting of children, those who, in exercising it, deliberately frustrate its natural power and purpose, they sin against nature and commit a deed which is shameful and intrinsically vicious. End of quote from the encyclical. There is an unbreakable connection between the unitive meaning and the procreative meaning of the conjugal act, and both are inherent in the conjugal act. Sex is for babies and for bonding. Now, if people are not ready for babies or bonding, they ought not to be engaging in acts of sexual intercourse. The modern age tends to treat babies as burdens and not as gifts. Don't we speak about accidental pregnancies as if getting pregnant were like getting hit by a car. Some terrible accident has happened to us. For the truth is that if a pregnancy results from an act of sexual intercourse, this means that something has gone right, not that something has gone wrong. Babies are treated as an unwelcome intrusion on the sexual act. Women now take a pill to thwart their fertility as if fertility were a disease against which we need a cure. Contraception treats the woman's body as if there was something wrong with it. The use of contraception suggests that God made a mistake in the way he designed the body and that we must correct his error. Let us not fail to mention that many forms of contraception are abortifacients. The sexual act is meant to be an act of total self-giving, and that in withholding their fertility from one another, spouses are not doing what they promised on their wedding day, to give themselves totally to each other. St. John Paul II said that the ultimate reason for the contraceptive anti-life anti -life mentality is the absence of God in people's hearts. They lie with their bodies. One of the most certain ways to distinguish simple sexual attraction for love is to think about whether all you want from another person is pleasure or whether you would like to have a baby with him or her. There are other devices and methods which have also been developed with contraception in mind. Condoms, Depro Provera injection, and that was first introduced for those who couldn't be relied on to take their pills, such as those with learning difficulties, and now increasingly being used, especially those who have had an abortion already. 
So a contraceptive is something which works against conception. Literally, it translates against the beginning. Do we have sympathy then with the desire to limit the number of children in a family as a woman to have the opportunity to go out to work? Of course. Freedom of choice is not confined to only certain members of society. In Humanae Vitae, that's the encyclical referred to already, it is stated that it is the responsibility of the parents to choose and decide the size of their family, but the Christian view differs from our culture's point of view because we don't decide this alone. It is in prayerful union with God and taking into account the church's teaching that the Christian couple decides. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.